So today I'm talking with Ian Dewardin, who's a former professional player, a member of the PFA, who's now doing some great work in the fire service. Ian, how are you doing? Yeah, good, thanks, Liam. Your journey is actually a really unique one. You've had a career as a professional and now you're working in the fire service. How have you found that transition? Uh, yeah, very similar. I mean, compared to a changing room, uh, being around a fire station, the camaraderie is very similar. Um, a lot of ex-forces involved. Yeah, a lot of things in common between the, the two and you can draw a lot of parallels as well. Yeah, definitely. And when you initially first took that step into transitioning out of full-time football what were the challenges you faced during that period well football was all I ever knew I mean I started off professionally at um, Burnley um, as, a, as a YTS footballer for two years and then I signed a professional contract with them um, uh, Andre Adrian Heath and uh, Chris Waddle was my one of my initial managers as well down there he gave me my Burnley debut um, and, and you kind of cocooned into that way of life and, and, and that environment and, and that's all you know and it's very difficult to make that kind of break out of uh, a footballing career um, but fortunately I mean the fire service is, is, is an extremely good employer um, and they do facilitate that as you as you develop within that career um, and I found it quite easy towards the end especially from the physical aspect um, which never caused me many problems early on. Yeah it's one of the most underestimated things is just how fit you need to be. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a it's a bit of a that's a bit of a myth with the cakes and um, and the crisps and the sweets that we all eat. That there's not that much of that going on. But we do we do get the facility to train on station. Um, being physically fit is a key part of doing our job and our role. Um, I mean, the last thing you want to do is get into a burning building, um, get to a casualty, and not have the strength and the energy to get somebody out. So yeah, absolutely, strength is paramount without doubt. Ian, when you first stepped out of professional football, you had some support from the PFA on an educational course. What was that? Yes, yeah, so uh, the PFA funded an electrical qualification for me. Um, when I first started on my first station up in Doncaster, uh, one of my managers was an electrician as well on his days off. And I used to do a little bit of work for him. Um, and I got the bug a little bit. You know, it tested my mind in a different way, away from the fire service and away from what football gave me. Um, and I was fortunate that the PFA funded me 50% uh, of my qualifications through a grant. Um, and, and thankfully, that's paying dividends now. And I believe you've been working on some fire safety videos with the council. How, how has that been? Yeah, so Norfolk Fire and Rescue Service, along with uh, one of our partner agencies, uh, who are called NAPIT, which is a National Association of Professional Inspectors and Testers, who are a governing body for electricians uh, within the UK, uh, we got together to look at some of the electrical fire safety statistics. And over the last five years, uh, would you believe that 40% of house fires nationally uh, have an electrical cause and electrical fault? Um, so when we picked up on that statistic, it, it seemed the natural progression to start doing a campaign and, and kind of isolating these and removing these figures. Um, one of the things about Norfolk as well is that we're above the national average at 70%. So 70% of our house fires are started from an electrical cause. Yeah. Um, so we've created uh, a slogan, which is live. Um, the L stands for look, listen and smell for electrical burning. Uh, if you look at electrical switch gear, you can see yellow discoloration if it starts to fail or overheat. Um, listen for electrical arcing. Sometimes you might hear a little uh, buzzing or a cracking behind the switches or the sockets. And that can be a sign that the socket's failing or there's a loose connection. And also when electrical failure happens is kind of a pungent, fishy, plasticky smell, which is given off. Um, that's obviously a telltale sign that um, something's overheating behind the, the switch gear. Um, so that's the L. I is uh, investigate and isolate. So if you see any of those factors, isolate the electrical supply at the earliest opportunity. And that prevents, obviously, any kind of fire from developing. Um, and then the V stands for www.visitelectricalsafetycompetentperson, which is a, a national uh, website to get an approved electrician uh, to resolve your problem. But ultimately, we're there to put fires out and save people's lives. So the E stands for emergency. Uh, call 999, uh, get out, stay out and call the fire service out. Well, Ian, thanks so much for spending the time to talk to me. I know you've got a night shift ahead of you tonight. Um, yeah. And for all the fantastic work you've been doing, it's really interesting to talk.